non dhitana anagami and eventually highest spirits are. So that's why you become mom from household life to the homelessness. So in this sutta, now on the occasion, the venerable Mulya Paguna was associating over much with nouns, so now it's a woman monks. He was associated so much with nouns that if any monk spoke this, play, this phrase of those nouns in his presence, he would become angry and displeased and ought to make a case of it. If any monk spoke this phrase of the venerable Mulya Paguna in those nouns present, they would become angry and displeased and would make a case of it. So much was the venerable Mulya Paguna associating with nuns. Then a certain man went to the blessed one and after paying homage to him, he sat on every one side and told the blessed one what was taking place. Then the blessed one addressed the certain man thus, man, come man, tell the man Mulya Paguna, in my name that the teacher calls him, Yes, Venerable Sir, he replied, and he went to the blessed Venerable Mulya Paguna and told him, The teacher calls you friend Paguna. Yes, friends. He replied, and he went to the blessed one, and after paying homage to him, he sat down at one side. The blessed one asked him, Paguna, is it true that you were associated over much with nuns? That you were associated so much with nuns? That if any monk speaks the disgrace of those nuns in your present, you become angry and displeased and I make, make a case of it. And if any monk speaks the disgrace of you in those nuns present, you become angry and displeased and make a case of it. Are you resisting too much in nuns? As it seems, yes, Venerable Sir. So he is to the truth with the Buddha, you know. Even if you like, Buddha know already. If you are your mind, he can read your mind. And he said, Paguna, it is not proper for you. A classman gone forth out of faith from home life into homelessness. To associate over much with nuns. Therefore, if anyone is fit, the spreads of those months in your present, you should abandon any desires and any thoughts based on the house of life. You see, you should abandon. And here you should train us. My mind will be unaffected. And I shall utter no evil words. So that way you are practicing according to Dhamma. I shall abide compassionate for his welfare with a mind of loving kindness, with a inner hate. That is how you should train Paguna. So Buddha advised him how to live. You know. After becoming a monk, if you always talk with the woman, what is the difference? Family life and the monk life? Sometimes I am scared, you know, because we, we as a minister of the monastery, when I, I call the husband, husband did not pick up, and when I call the uh, wife, and sometimes, you know, I think that maybe if I talk with the wife, Husband will think that Pante always talk with my wife. Maybe he's going to have a relation with my wife too. You know? Then criticize. Sometimes yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, there are some people that they criticize that way is I want to So so that's why first time I try to talk husband. And then if I cannot contact with him, then I call to his wife. Then I say, hello, I talk with your, your husband, you know. And so he, he doesn't pick up my phone, that's why I call him. 
So I don't talk too much, just, uh, okay, we have the ceremony, uh, so I would like to give you, uh, I would like to invite you for coming to our ceremony. Okay, that's all. Bye-bye. Peace. -bye. <laughs> so, so if I talk maybe long time, and if, if my husband say, ah, oh, with who are you talking? With Bhante. Why are you talking long, long time? What are you talking about? <laughs> so, Paguna, it is not humble for you, a clansman gone full out of faith from the home life into homelessness, to associate over much with them. Therefore, if anyone speaks the space of those months in your present, you should abandon any desire and any thoughts based on the household life. And here you should train us. My mind will be unaffected, and I shall utter no evil words. I shall avoid compassion for his welfare with a mind of, of loving kindness, with an inner hate. That is how you should train Pagoda. If anyone gives those nuns a blue with hands, with a cloth, or with a stick, or with a knife in your presence, you should abandon any desires and any thoughts based on the household life. Hear me, you should train us. My mind will be unaffected and I shall utter no evil words. I shall avoid compassionate for his welfare with a mind loving kindness, with an inner hate. If anyone is faced this phrase in your present, you should abandon any desires and any thoughts based on household life. Hearing you should train us. My mind will be unaffected, and I shall utter no evil words. I shall avoid compassion for his welfare, with a mind loving kindness, with a inner hate. If anyone should give you a blue with his hand, with a club, with a stick, or with a knife, you should abandon any desires and any thoughts based on the household life. Here it is should train us. My mind will be unaffected, and I shall utter no evil words. I shall avoid compassion for his welfare, with a mind of loving kindness, with a real hate. That is how you should train Pagoda. You see, beautiful advice Buddha is giving to him. So that way, your my life is beautiful. You know? So if you need something, you say you support her. I need medicine, you know, I need food, or I, whatever, I need the uh, ready for saving, you know, you can tell them, but you should not associate too much with the any woman. <laughs> so that way, your meditation will go negatively. If you talk, the Buddha said, oh monks, The man's voice is uh, the boy, woman voice is so sweet. I never see the their voice like like uh, like the man. The, I never see that before. And man voice also very sweet. So in the Abhutranic area, so if you you, you you find it, so I never see the man boy the voice of the man. It's so sweet that, like, I don't know how to explain that. <laughs> but anyway, he understood, right? I think it was it Bhante that uh, to a woman there's no sweeter sound than the sound of a man's voice, and to a man there's no sweeter sound than the exactly that one. Ambutradika, really, that's one sutta. So if you read that, then you'll find there, yeah. you know. So the Ambutradika mentioned. So that's why the, especially who are the forest man, you know, they live in the forest, they, they don't associate too much with the lay people, they just go for arms round. The people know the man will come for arms round, so there's no offer to them. And then after returning, 
are coming back from the ashram, they took the lunch and breakfast and they meditate. And you will see their face because they, they have their own kuti. Some of them put under a tree, just meditate. Even they don't want to talk, they don't want to waste their time by talking with the people, you know. Because they are very patient. When I was in Thailand, I went actually for doing the um, Parivasa Kamma. Parivasa Kamma means, as I said, if you have any Sandalisa offense, 13 kinds of Sandalisa offense, so monks should take it to be to clean you, your mind, you know. So I had the chance to get the Parivasa Kamma in, in Thailand, the forest monastery. There were many monks came from the different, different cities, you know, different places. And that one is the forest monastery. I, I went from Bangkok to there, almost two hours drive, you know. And I saw many people, the Buddhist people, were there for doing the dana, offering. Because they think that those monks are taking the Parivasa Kamma, so their minds very their mind will be very clean because they are taking the going to Vinaya, they're taking the action, they're going to Vinaya to be purify their mind. So that way if we offer something to them, we will gain a lot of merit. Many, many people were there for offering. I saw that. So that temple, the forest man, they don't talk too much. You know, we, we follow them because we, we, we went there for taking Parivasa Kama. Whatever they do, we follow. They don't talk too much. Just wait for a strong. When people offer something, touching like this, finish. Just blessing a little bit, finish, then go. And people accept that blessing from them. Okay, sadhu, 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 then they left. They don't, do, they, they, they don't have time to talk too much with them. And after finishing lunch, and you will know, see those monks, because every monk who went there could eat for practicing. So there was the, the chief monk of that monastery, abbot of that monastery. I saw him only one time. He just one day came for giving a dhamma talk, only a short time, and then he smiled, his kuri is the top of the mountain. And he went there, he never came. He never come, you know, from the high of city within 10 days. And after finishing the Hariosa Kama, and I saw I, the different kuri there, one kuri here, another kuri there. A very far, far, you know, big mountain. So, that's why if we can stay in the forest one way, we can also observe the discipline very well. No need to talk too much, like Asazi. You know, Asazi, he practiced meditation under the tree and Venerable Sariputta saw from far away. He's very quiet, he's very calm, he's very peaceful, he's not talking with anyone too much. This is the monk life. Okay? More you talk and more you break up the precept. You see the people, there are a lot of people, many people, they just gossip, 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 talking, 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 talking. You know, meaningful, meaningless, meaningful, meaningless, they talk a lot. But that way you break up the precept. <laughs> you know, Sometimes when I talk, when some people call me, 
we have to talk with the public because we are the minister of the monastery, you know. Some people talking, 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 I'm so tired and I put I, my phone I take one side and just keep quiet. He's talking, talking. I put a loud loud speaker. Let him talk. Because I am tired, you know. He's talking, talking. And I said, Hello Vanta, are you here? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my subject already finished, so I'll talk with you later. Okay, bye bye. <laughs> if you say, I don't have time to talk with you, you know, I don't want to talk with you, he'll be It's better to ask. I keep my phone one side, let him talk. No problem. Just quiet. Sometimes I do that way. <laughs> Otherwise, if you say, okay, uh, I can, I'm very busy now, so I cannot talk with you, when I, he would think that, oh, when I call him, so he doesn't give me time, he doesn't want to talk with me, and he criticizes about me, and he, he will say something to others. So that way, I just passion and then let him talk. Maybe he's, whatever he's going to say, maybe it will finish, you know. Maybe I keep talking, 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 and then eventually he's so tired, then stop. More you talk, more you'll be tired. So, the Buddha is now going to talk about he eat at a single session. That the Blessed One addressed the monks thus, Monks, there was an occasion when the monks satisfied my mind. Here I address the monks thus, Monks, I eat at a single session. By doing so, I am free from illness and affliction, and I enjoy health, strength, and a comfortable body. Come monks, eat at a single session. By so doing, you will be free from illness and affliction, and you will enjoy health, strength, and a comfortable body. And I have no need to keep on instructing those monks. I had only to arouse mindful in them. You see? So he always guide the monks to be mindful. Show them the right path. But he doesn't want to lead and control the monks. So I teach you, you go to the another tree, by empty heart, or you come in, you could in, and then you can practice meditation. You all. This is my advice, this is my instruction for you. So he did that way. Of course, there are many simile here because this is the simile of the saw. There are many, many simile. So I skip some similes, okay? Because if I if I read all the similes, it will take more than two hours. If we understand the essence of the sutta, that's all. So I included a few similes, which is very easy and simple to understand. That one I am going to say, but most of the similes I skipped, you know. Suppose there were a big shala tree grew near a village of town and it was soaked with a castor, oil wicks, and some men would appear desiring its gold welfare and protection. He would cut down and throw out the crop saplings that dropped the sap and he would clean up the interior of the group and tent. The 
straight well forms saplings so that the solitary group later on would become to grow, increase and fulfill. So two monks and lay followers abandon what is unwholesome and devote yourself to wholesome states. For that is how you will come to grow, increase, fulfillment in this Dhamma and discipline. So he said, abandon unwholesome, develop wholesome, is your way. You know? You see the wholesome things, you know it, you understand it, you the six are there, and then develop the wholesome. Keep the present, and when you talk with someone, always talk about Dhamma, that way you will never have the wholesome thing. Let me tell you one thing. When I say something, a lot of story coming in my mind. You know? During the Buddha's time, Buddha was still in his kuri. Not so far from his kuri. A few months they are making sound like in the, when you go to the market, you see people talking, talking, talking. So that kuri, they were talking very loudly. And then Buddha went to that kuti, knocked the door, tap, 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 tap. And those monks opened the door. He said, oh monks, what are you doing here? You are, you are t talking like a market. Is it a market? And those monks said, well, oh, sir, we are discussing that. We are sharing, we are discussing about the Dhamma. Dhamma Sakasa. Dhamma Sakasa means discussing the Dhamma. So that way, you are increasing wholesome. Because you are discussing Dhamma. You are not criticizing about other. You know? So you are discussing the truth. Whatever you have experienced, you share it to others. Then Buddha said, O monks, if you discuss, please discuss Dhamma all the time. Don't discuss other things. That way, you may have unwholesome. And because of unwholesome, you will suffer. You will not be able to free from suffering. It will be hard for you. So he said like that. So, now is the example of the Vedahika and Medkai. Formerly, in this same Savatthi, there was a housewife name with a hika. And a good report about the mistress with a hika had spread thus. Mistress with a hika is gentle. Mistress with a hika is meek. Mistress with a hika is peaceful. Now mistress with a hika had a maid named Kali who was clever, nimble, and need in her work. The maid Kali thought a good report about my lady has spread us. Mistress Videhika is gentle. Mistress Videhika is meek. Mistress Videhika is peaceful. How is it now? Why she does not show anger? Is it nevertheless actually present in her? Or is it absent? Or else, is it just because 
My work is me that my lady shows no anger. Though it is actually present in her. Suppose I test my lady. So the maid coming got up late. Mr. Sudhaka said, Hey, Kali, what is it, madam? What is the matter that you get up so late? Nothing is the matter, madam. Nothing is the matter. You wit girl, yet you get up so late. She was angry and displeased. And she is scold. Then the maid Kali thought, the fact is that while my lady does not show anger, it is actually present in her, not absent. And it is just because my work is me that my lady shows no anger, though it is actually present in her not absent. Now she want to test her more. Kali, you know. Suppose I test my lady a little more. So the maid Kali got up later in the day. The mistress Kali said, Mistress Vidahika said, Hey Kali, what is it madam? What is the matter that you get up later in the day? Nothing is the matter, madam. Nothing is the matter. You wait, girl. Yet you get up later in the day. And she was angry and displeased and she spoke words of displeasure. Then the maid Kali thought, the fact is that while my lady does not show anger, it is actually present in her, not absent. But it is just because my work is need that my lady shows no anger, though it is actually present in her, not absent. Suppose I test my lady a little more. So the maid Kali got up still later in the day. Then Mistress Vidhika said, Hey Kali, what is it, madam? What is the matter that you get up still later in the day? Nothing is the matter, madam. Nothing is the matter. You witch girl, yet you get up still later in the day. And she was angry and displeased. And she took a ruby pin, gave her a blue on the head, and cut her head. Then the maid Kali, with blood running from her head, from her cut head, denounced her mistress to the neighbors. See, ladies. The gentle ladies work. See ladies, the meek ladies work. How can she become angry and displeased with her only maid for getting up late? How can she take a ruling pin and give her a blue on the head and cut her head? Then later on, a bad report about Miss Pesudeka spread thus. Mistress Videhika's rough. Mistress Videhika is violent. Mistress Videhika is merciless. So that's why you know when somebody said, okay, a man go to the forest and practice meditation. Five months, one year, two years, three years. And after that, when he came back to the monastery, he's very calm, he's very peaceful, 
you know, he always wear the outer robe, upper robe, already dance ball. People think, wow, he ate in a lounge. He is around. People think that way, you know. So how do you know someone Arahan or not? You have to stay with them at least five months. How he's getting up, how he's walking, how he's eating, how he's talking. Every moment you have to check him. You have to stay with him five at least five months, then you'll see whether he has anger or not. And on the other hand, you have to have knowledge, Sutta number 112 from Ajimarika. Sutta number 112, when you read that Sutta, all the knowledges have the Arahant. If somebody said, okay, that man is Arahant. If you have knowledge, all the, if you have knowledge about the Sutra number 112, then you can go to the Pante. Do you have this knowledge? Do you have that knowledge? And if you cannot answer, he's not Arahant. There is one story, even last year when I came here, I said, you know, before coming at the Sutra Meditation Center, uh, before, before I come in here, I heard from somebody, you know, one guy came here for practicing meditation. He's a very serious practitioner, lay person, not, not someone else, not mom, okay? Everybody sleep. He come here 3 o'clock for practicing meditation. He doesn't sleep. So, after 10 days, he has to leave, right? He has to go back. And today's retreat finish. David is ready to take him to the airport. They will say, hey, are you ready now? Yes. Okay. Everything that time to take his the baggage, everything in the car. David is driving, driving, driving to the Farmington. Mm -hmm. And he said to David, go back to the Masuka. <laughs> David said, hey, what happened? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> go back to the Masuka? What happened? Go back to the Masuka. I ate an Allah. Okay, they say, okay, no problem, that's fine, that's fine. And then they took him in Namasuke <laughs> And he went to the Bhante. We, Bhante, you know, what happened to that one guy? I took him to the, I, I took him to the airport. And I, we went until the, till the um, Farmito. And that guy doesn't want to go back. He said, he ate an Araham. So he came back again, what should I do? Okay, call everyone. Six o'clock, I'm coming. And then they came here, opened the sutta at like one, one, two. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question, okay? I'm going to the sutta from the sutta, then you are going to answer. Okay? Okay. The first line, he read it. Do you have it? He's quiet. You are the line. Finish. Do you want to add something? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm here, I mean, I was right here, sitting here, so. Oh, you was here, right? Yeah. Okay, maybe I just heard. Yeah, yeah, you heard uh, it, mostly right. Okay, mostly right. So, do you want to share? Uh, do you want to add something? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it wasn't the first question, but it was the third question. Okay. He read the sutta and he gave answers that really weren't very good, but they were close, you know. Okay. 
And then finally, the Bhante came up with, are you, do you have any attachment to your family? He said, oh yes, you're not an R. <laughs> 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 so he touched me about the family. Yeah, yeah. You see? And he went back. So that's why, you know, everything in the Sutta. When you attend Sutta Panna, Sutta number 48, when you attend Arahant, Sutta number 112. So you practice yourself, you read the Sutta, ask the Sutta. Sutta will show you. That you, whether you attain Araham or not, whether you attain Sutaparna or not, right? So that's why we have to, all the time we have to use as a guide the Sutta, you know? So now Buddha is going to talk about when somebody speak timely, untimely, use the harsh word and gentle word. So at that time, how should you live? How should you behave with them? So too, some monks are extremely gentle, extremely meek, extremely peaceful, so long as disagreeable courses of speech do not touch them. But it is when disagreeable courses of speech touch them that it can be understood whether that monk or lay follower is really kind, gentle, and peaceful. I do not call a monk easy to admonish to who is easy to admonish and makes them make themselves easy to admonish only for the sake of getting robes, arms, food, or rest, rest, rest in place, that means monastery and medicinal requisites. So when you become one, you need these four requisites. If you have four requisites, that's all. You know? When I was here, 2016, that time I didn't establish my, uh, the Brahma we had written center in New York. You know? So after coming here, I realized Bhante Bui doesn't have any supporter. He lives here in the forest. And if you think about his past story, I ask a lot of questions. You see, in the, close to the bathroom, there is one, one kuri like that. So he, he is still there. And he wrote one book, Bread. That, and the Anapana Sutta, I think, right, with the, the six years. And that book was very powerful, actually. And by and he gave some talk on YouTube, and then, you know, the people uh, found that he spoke, and they came here to practice meditation. And he, he stayed one side, first time he accepted one meditator, two meditators. Then she said close to him. And they practice meditation there. So he shared a lot of things to me. And I was thinking, ah. So before we you know we were thinking, okay, if one people, two people, we should not get a We thought that way. But after coming here, completely changed. I was thinking, okay, even one guy, he's very well practitioner, why I'm not going to teach him? So Bhante did. And then in my mind arose that, you know, the Bhante is here in the forest. We have many supporters, but he doesn't have here. If Bhante we can establish a meditation center where I cannot. So and I discussed with him, he said, 
You can do it. Don't try hard. Don't try. Don't try to get sore very quickly. Keep the precept. Practice the dharma. Take care of dharma. Slowly you can establish it. Then your skin has to be like elephant. He advised me. If you want to establish a center, your skin has to be like elephant. Otherwise, you cannot start with meditation center. Because I also share him a lot of things, the problem, you know. He said, only one way you can succeed if your skin become like anything. Somebody will criticize, somebody will appreciate, you know. Just let it, let it be, let it go. You should not. You have to become. So then wait. Let's let's see whatever he said, whatever he advised me. Is it it, it work or not? I try. Keep it present. Take care of them all the time. So I when I approach my people, okay, I'm going to service center, so please you support me every month because I am going to rent a house. So first time, at the David went with David Obasa and the Bante, I went to one house, very small. And when David went there, oh, this is a very small house. But I paid rent 2100 one month. And electricity bill and then internet everything, almost 2500 so I collected the money from the people one hundred fifty dollars, you know, every month. But it's not easy to get one hundred fifty dollars from the every month from the people. Some people, have, you know, when you have, when you don't talk with them very sweet, they stop paying. Sometimes when you don't give your microphone to them to speak, they stop paying. It's really not easy to run the center, you know. But I always remember about the really advice. Keep the precept. Take care of them. Gradually will come. But they accept donation here. This will give to David. David is running the center. Deities around here, deities will protect you. So what I was thinking, if Bhante's advice is, is it work or not, I had to test. If I fail, maybe I will not stay in New York. I will go away from the New York. I didn't know like that. But eventually, I will succeed. Because I, at least I try. I try to help my people. So before I start listening, he said, okay, don't think only Bangladeshi communities. Most of the Asian people in this country, when they establish center, they think only their community. This is not your country, this is my country. So you have to think my people also. If you go to a monastery like Thai monastery, Burmese monastery, Cambodian monastery, Laos monastery, Sri Lanka monastery, they are traditionally they celebrate a ceremony with their community, you know, they have a strong tradition, writing rituals, practices. You see here, writing rituals, no practice here. Everything is practical. I love it. 
This is what the Buddha said in the, in, in the Dhanapada, in the Sutta. Oh monks, what I practice, please practice like me. That way you can liberate yourself. If you just come to Buddha, I offer you incense, I offer you candle, please give me Nibbana, please give me Nibbana. Can the Buddha give you? This is not something you just ask him and then he gives you Nibbana. Finish. It's not like that. That's why Buddha said, Akhaliku. Akhaliku. Immediately affected. O must come and see my Dhamma. After seeing, please understand. When you understand it, please practice. After practicing, you get the truth. If you understand the truth, continue. If you think that this is not for you, you can leave. I saw at Tamasuka many people, you know, because I was a senior four months continuously. It's a long time. I didn't know where to four months like me. Right? Mm. Only me. Some people, 10 days retreat, not finish. They left. They will end in it tomorrow. Okay. And he took it to the airport. And most of them, of course, they finished their tenders retreat and then they got a benefit, you know, and with a big smile, they left. So, Dhamma, don't think that Dhamma is all the time easy for everyone. That's why Buddha, after getting enlightenment, he thought my Dhamma is so deep. My Dhamma will understand only the people who practice the Dhamma. So most of the monastery, if you go, have the problem. Why? Because they want to be leader. But actually they are never kill the prison. They come to the monastery, they want to the microphone. Hell and talk, 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 but actually they are not following that. They just want to show up to the people. And then other people, when they hear their voice, they hate it rise in their mind because they don't like it. And the monks who are still there, the abbot of that temple, he faced the problem. You know, most of the temple, people are always thinking that maybe, especially the Buddhist country, Sri Lankan temple, Burmese temple, Cambodian temple, they don't have problem, but actually they also have problem. Because the people want to be the leader of the community. But if you see their background, they never keep the present. All the time they break up the present. They never understand the Dhamma. And they want to leave the monks. It's not fair, you know. So when I was in Myanmar and in Thailand, most of the monastery lived by the Sangha. People just come and offer the food, offer the dana, and listen to my talk, sadhu sadhu, and finish, they go back. But I don't know, after coming in this country, why these people became like that? Cambodian temple had problem. Burmese temple had problem. Thai temple had problem. Bangladeshi temple had problem. And there are some monastery running by the monk. So this temple, no problem. 
They are man can live peacefully, happily. They can teach to the monks, to the people, very peacefully, very nicely. So that's why, you know, the especially I saw in the past the people and the Buddhist monks who were, who were really highly educated. In my country, most of the monastery run by the people. Monk just stay there, giving the five precepts, giving Dhamma talk. And they suffer a lot. They cannot practice. So Buddha said, O oh, monks, it is Sutta. If you stay any monastery, if you see the problem there, you cannot practice Dhamma very well. Please leave the monastery. Don't stay there. Leave the monastery and go to the forest. Practice alone. You have arms warm and then you stand up free, close to one village. <laughs> Every day go for arms round, come back and practice yourself. He advised that way. You know. So that's why I stay in the community also not easy, right? Teaching, I mean, <coughs> teaching to the people also not easy. It's really very difficult. I had 23 years, 20, 23 years experience. <laughs> I'm still suffering, you know, but I just quiet. Let them fight. So, here the Buddha said, because uh, what I do not call a man easy to admonish, to whom he said, easy to admonish, and makes them make themselves easy to admonish only for the sake of getting ropes, arms, food, a resting place, and medicinal requisites. Why is that? Because that man is not easy to admonish, nor makes themselves easy to admonish. When they get no robes, arms, food, rest in place, and medicinal requisites. But when a man is easy to admonish and makes himself easy to admonish, because he honors, he respects, he Reverse the Dhamma. Him I call easy to admonish. So that means one who respect, one who honors. You know, so the Dhamma. So I call easy to admonish. So one way we can say one who is practicing my Dhamma, that one is my real son because he's following, he's practicing the Dhamma. That is how you should train. There are these five courses of speech that others may use when they address to you. Their speech may be timely or untimely, true or untrue, gentle or harsh, connected with good or with harm. Spoken with a mind of loving kindness or with in a hate. When others address you, their speech may be timely or untimely. When others address, address you, their speech may be true or untrue. When others address you, their speech may be gentle or harsh. When others ad address you, their speech may be connected with good or with harm. When others address you, their speech 
may be spoken with a mind of loving kindness or with in a hate. Here it should train us. Our minds will remain unaffected and we shall not know evil words. We shall abide compassionate for their welfare with a mind of loving kindness, with a in a hate. We shall abide for bearing that person with a mind imbued with loving kindness and studying with him. We shall abide for bearing the all encompassing world with a mind in with loving kindness, abandoned, exalted, immeasurable, without hostility and without ill will. That is how we should train. This is the Buddha said to the monks, you know. Then I skip a lot of um, scenery actually. So the end of the Sutta, the important scenery is even if bandits want to savor you savagely, limb by limb, with a two handle saw. Two handle saw. Okay. He who gave, gave rise to a mind of hate towards them would not be carrying out my teaching. See the most important actually similar in this sutta. Because of that simile, this sutta name it has a similar the song. Here we should train us. Our mind will remain unaffected and we shall utter no evil words. We shall abide compassionate for their welfare with a mind of loving kindness, without in a hate. We shall abide to permitting them with a mind in with loving kindness. And starting with them, we shall abide for the all encompassing world with a mind imbued with loving kindness, abandoned, exalted, immeasurable, without hostility and without evil. That is how we should pray. If you keep this advice on the city of the circumstance in your mind, do you see any course of speech, trivial or gross, that you could not endure? No, Venerable Sir. So the Muliya Paguna said, No, Venerable Sir. Therefore, you should keep this advice on the seal of the soul constantly in your mind that will lead to your welfare and happiness for a long time. That is what the blessed one said. The monks and lay followers were satisfied and delighted in the blessed one was. This is the for tonight. Right? Now do you have any questions?